You have written two songs that for the LGBTQ community I think are so important and so impactful. I know, uh, follow your arrow that you did with Casey and Brandy Clark, and then also um, uh, Rainbow mm -hmm. with Natalie Hemby and Casey, obviously. Yeah. Tell me what it was like to, I mean, you said it was just you guys sitting there, but I mean, to have that idea to write a, two songs like that, I mean, what was that like? Well, you know, I have to just give that credit to Casey because I actually, especially with Follow Your Arrow, because that was in 2012 when we wrote that song, 2013. And I didn't go into any songwriting session with an agenda to write a song that was an anthem for the gay community mm -hmm. because that felt a little too on the nose for me. Like people would be like, oh, well, of course you want to wave that flag. And I was a little bit scared in the country music world that it might hurt my reputation or that it would brand me. Right. Um, but Casey doesn't have those same limitations or fears. She says exactly what's on her mind and in turn has really helped me do that. Follow Your Arrow was just something we were just messing around with. I mean, yeah. she had taken this idea to Katy Perry, uh, this hook, Follow Your Arrow, wherever it points. And then luckily, Katie said, I think you should say that for yourself. And she brought it to Brandy Clark and I, and Casey already had such a direction. What an honor that Brandy and I, being um, out artists, songwriters, that we got to be with this, uh, this incredible gay ally, mm -hmm. and that she was ready to wave her hand and say, you know what, it doesn't matter. It's like, follow your arrow, we'll do whatever you want. And, yeah. um, and then with Rainbow, that song has taken on a completely new meaning for me. We wrote that song right around the time we wrote Follow Your Arrow, actually. Oh. And uh, it's become a much more personal song to all of us for different reasons. But um, we lost someone in our family this past year. It became our family's anthem. And uh, Casey actually and Natalie uh, sang the song at her funeral. And um, it has a far more reaching uh, you know, it's a, it's a vessel far beyond just this community. It is for all people who just need, um, just to need see, to see that there is a rainbow. Uh, I, those kind of songs used to seem really cheesy to me, but now being a part of a song like that, I realize how it heals and changes because it's healed me. I, I'm able to listen to that song objectively. It's, it's more about just trying to help. And so the fact that it also became this anthem for the community. I'm just so along for the ride and, and just so happy that Casey knows herself well enough to speak up and is brave. You um, have been in this business a long time. You, um, more than 40 number one hits in country. Um, they're all my favorite songs, I'm not just saying that. Thank um, you. What was it like, you know, before you came out to be gay and in country music? Because I think even in the couple years since I, it feels like it's a different place now. It is. But in the beginning, I would imagine it was a lot, a whole different situation. Well, it's definitely different because of people like Casey. I have to give her credit. She's a big part of that. You know, I moved to Nashville originally in 1994. Uh, and at the end of the 90s, uh, there was an artist who was in the closet, and his name was Ty Herndon. And he had. Hey, Ty. Hey, Ty. <laughs> and he had some big hits. And what happened was when he was outed, his career really, you know, hit a wall. So for someone like me watching that, that was scary, thinking, mm -hmm. well, maybe I shouldn't come out. And I want this dream so badly. All I ever wanted was to be in country music. And all of a sudden, it looked like those two couldn't go together. And um, so that kept me in the closet longer. But ultimately, because of Ty and because of some other artists like that who did step out first, even if they were pulled out of the closet, it at least shined a light on the fact that there are gay people making country music. So I know when you said that when you did come out, it gave a new authenticity to your songwriting. Yeah. I'd love for you to talk a little bit more about well, that. Well, because prior to that, what would happen is I would go into writing rooms and I was so conscious of the pronouns I was using. If I talked about a relationship, uh, I'd get so caught up in what story did I tell? Where, who did I say I was dating? And that completely cast a shadow over my ability to tell the story in a truthful way. What happened once I came out was, and realizing that everybody knew and didn't care, it didn't matter what pronoun I used. I was no longer worried if a he or a she came out of my mouth. Mm -hmm. I was able to write the line properly. And in doing that, 
my songs became much more universal to straight people too, because a heart is a heart and we all hurt and love the same. And so when able, I was able to tell my truth about my relationships without worrying about the pronouns, the, the truth shown. And so, you know, therefore the songs made more sense and were also more unique. I was telling a, a, a unique story of my own and I became a songwriter that people went to for a certain kind of song and unrequited love was something that I, not sure why I was always drawn to as a songwriter, but I always wanted to tell that story of like the person who loved someone that that other person didn't know. And maybe that was because I was gay and in the closet before, but in, in being able to tell that story and not being afraid people would be like, oh, is he gay? Mm -hmm. Then the songs just became realer. You've written also, in addition to the, the ladies, Casey, you've d written for Sam Hunt, Luke Bryan, Keith, I think. Right. Um, you know, what was it like to, you, what was it like to kind of, you know, deal with like the men of country music? And I would imagine you'd be a little bit like, yeah. like scared, are they gonna accept me? But well, you know, the first, the first time I was ever invited on the road, which is a big deal for a country writer because a lot of these artists are on tour so often that they write on their bus. And I had just had a couple of hits with Kenny Chesney and Jake Owen and Luke Bryan invited me on the road and, and he was a huge star and also someone that I would consider if there is a if there is a level of straight or gay, I consider him to be on the extreme straight side. Yes, it, you yes, know, yes. hunting, fishing, loving, all that. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's one of his biggest hits. So, I, weirdly, the first question I asked when they were like, "Luke Brown wants you to go out on the road with him and write songs," I was like, "Does he know I'm gay?" Because I was so afraid that I would go back into that world of pronoun mm -hmm. fear, and they were like. I don't know, but I know he doesn't care, and he didn't, and that never was a factor, and we wrote a big song on that trip, mm -hmm. Kiss Tomorrow Goodbye, yeah. and we've been friends ever since. So all of the fears that I had around that were mine, and all the things that may have kept me from success prior to were my own projected ideas of what people would think. Uh, and I try to spread that message to people that in Nashville, I've been nothing but accepted once I accepted myself. That's amazing. Now, flash forward, you are married yeah. with kids mm -hmm. in Nashville and in LA, back and forth. Um, you know, what has that done for you to kind of have little ones and to kind of settle down? Well, your... it has exhausted me and <laughs> aged me a good 20 years in the seven that they've been alive. You did great, though. Oh, thanks. Uh, you know, that was something I didn't know I'd get. Um, I think I was afraid to dream that big because we're told that that might not happen for us. And especially in the generation that I came up in, I'm 45, it wasn't a time where people were realizing or able to say they were gay at such a young age. And uh, I just always thought that whoever I was with would be a secret. I used to have this story I would tell my mom because she you know, really had a hard time at first with me being gay. It was a, a new dream, a new idea of who her son was gonna be. And she would say, but why does it have to be out? Why does everyone have to know? And I said, you know, this was, and this was before at airports where you had to go through security, you could just walk to the gate with someone. And I said, you know how when you go with your partner to the gate at the airport and you kiss goodbye and watch him get on the airplane? I don't think I'm ever gonna get to do that. Oh my goodness. Yeah. And that used to really break my heart. And it also changed my mom's perception and she understood that. And I do get to do that. You do. And I get to do that with my husband and my kids and all the friends and family. Nobody, nobody ever thinks anything different. You know, I had a wedding in Mexico with all the guys that I grew up with and uh, all of my straight friends from Nashville and everyone was just so overwhelmed with love. And that was it. And, and it, it's really, it's, it's an incredible thing to be a part of. But I, I know that was a long-winded answer to just... That was a beautiful I'm, answer. I'm really, yeah. really blessed. You know, I think um, Nashville, we're doing a lot of work in, in southern regions to accelerate acceptance for the LGBTQ community. And I think Nashville is um, pretty progressive and accepting. Yeah. Um, I know you split your time between Nashville and Tennessee. Tennessee, the state, though, right now, is there's a lot going on. And there it's is. dangerous for the community, potentially. I mean, yes. there's some bills that could limit um, gay couples from adopting, from potentially getting married. What do you say to anyone out there that thinks that, you know, potentially LGBTQ people don't deserve the same rights? Our country operates so much out of fear and of the unknown. 
I have the same fears of the unknown. Even what might seem like uh, a hard comparison, even in doing Songland, there are times when somebody will come on the show that in my mind is of the utmost masculinity or might come from a world that seems so different than mine. And what I realize is that my own fear can put a wall up between me and them. And I, I, I mean, I'm sure that it's been said a million times, but usually what you hate, you are afraid of. Right. And so that's just our protection. I think that most people just don't know. And uh, I, I, I weirdly feel empathetic to people who fight it so hard because I feel like they're fighting some demons that are much deeper and much bigger than the ones that we've overcome. And um, I do think that together in continuing to tell this story and people like me, like you, coming out and saying we're here mm -hmm. and we're your neighbors and we're your brothers and your family members and a lot of times your parents who weren't able to speak up. I think the more people that are able to say we're here will remind those that are so afraid that we're the same. And, um, you know, I know that statements like that sound cliche and like something you would see on a bumper sticker, but ultimately it's something we just have to remind everybody of. And, and it, is, it is disappointing in a state like Tennessee that surrounding this community of music and forward thinking, and I don't even think it's forward thinking. It's just, it should just be common thinking of love. Mm -hmm. And that acceptance. There, yeah. there are people that just don't know. They just, they, so they've, they live in fear of it. And, um, I, you know, I don't know if that's a, an answer to it. No, I think it is. I mean, and, you know, what do you think the key, the, the key is to getting people to know? I mean, is it, it's, maybe it's this, you know, I think this is one part of it. I think that... Uh, hopefully getting loud enough and saying, I'm in country music, I work with Luke Bryan and all of your favorite good old boys. And guess what? It doesn't, it doesn't bother them at all. I mean, you know, that mm -hmm. sounds real basic, but no, I remember yeah. again talking about my mom, just having a friend or a like-minded person, you know, she worked at a bank when I came out and she kept it a secret for a long time. And ultimately one day, the woman next to her talked about her brother and my mom loved this woman. She just thought she was great. And this woman was talking about her gay brother openly. And my mom called me and, and said, did you know such and such had a gay brother? And I said, no, I don't know her. <laughs> but it was like, oh, we're not alone here. And she's so proud of her brother. I can be proud of my son. And I think that spreads. And so hopefully, yeah, a little tiny part of it, seeing a country songwriter working with all these people, having a family, and them seeing that my family is just like theirs, yep. and all the stuff that their kids do to drive them crazy, so do mine. <laughs> but, <laughs> but mostly it's just that we just want the same things. And, um, and I'm very lucky that I, I, I do live in a, a privileged world in that way. People have supported and lifted me up, and I know not everybody has that. And so I hope that people can see this and other people like me and go, this is very possible because it does start with just being able to imagine it, you know, mm -hmm. just that kid in front of the TV that used to watch the Country Music Awards when I was a kid and, and have that very small thought, like, I'm not like them, but all I want to do is be in that world. And uh, it worked out. 